about the so-called mass literature of the Soviet period, about the paradoxical phenomenon which is at the same time both existed and did not exist. However, to begin with, it is necessary to say that mass literature, what mass literature is. This phenomenon should be distinguished from so-called light reading or cheap literature, recreational literature. Because mass literature always depends on large circulations. It is more widespread than elite, elite literature, and this is uh, the main feature in which it they differentiate from each other. There could be recreational literature in antiquity, but the must one, the must literature can only arise when there are technical means for its reproduction. And secondly, in addition to large circulations, mass literature is always seen as bad by a part of society, but for various reasons. It can be seen as rude, clumsily made, unfeasible, far from reality. Criteria can be different, but there is always a large group of people who despise it. This is how Yuri Lotman, a famous literary scholar, defined it. Uh, mass literature, but I would define it easier. Mass literature is always a literature which consists of ready-made blocks from cubes. Either you or your children probably played with Lego in childhood. There are always ready-made elements from which you can build something, and what can be built is uh, always shown on a diagram in its finished form. It doesn't mean that every, everyone must build exactly what is depicted on this diagram. One can, can make something completely different, but the very principle of constructing from ready-made elements, the assembly of ready-made blocks, works in mass literature. While in elitist literature, high literature, non-genre literature, it is called various names, every time these elements are reinvented. I did not accidentally say the words non-genre literature and genre literature. This contrast is very important. The fact is that mass literature always breaks down into ready-made genres. High literature also brought down into them at one time, but it disappeared at the beginning of the 19th century with the arrival of Romanticism. Classicism was the last movement in which these ready-made, rigidly fixed genres prevailed. Afterwards, the, uh, the later you go, the more these genres are mixed. In mass literature, it is contrary. Everything is clearly fixed, and it does not claim to be innovative at all. I do not claim any completeness of this list, but these are undoubtedly the main forms of mass literature or popular literature. Let us look at the genres of popular literature. Actually, you know all that, of course. Mystery, in which there is always an investigator and a criminal. Action, in which evil is always punished by the use of force. Romance which probably does not need to be commented at all. Uh, thriller, that's something that should cause a sense of terror. Science fiction, in which certain absolute laws of nature are usually violated. A fantasy, a genre that sprouted in the 20th century from science fiction and contained, in fact, fairy tales in it. And historical or adventural novels. Each of these large genres has many genre variations. We'll talk about some of them later. What happened in the Soviet times? In Soviet times there was almost no mass, liter mass literature, popular literature. It was not welcomed. Why? Because literature was believed to be a serious ideological part of life. Literature was supposed to teach, not to entertain. However, people still needed to read something. They were looking for some entertainment uh, in the literature as well as in the cinema. So certain genres still existed. However, almost every one of them was loaded with an ideology. 
In addition to entertainment, it had to perform some useful ideological function. What genres existed in Soviet era? Let's look at the slide. Already on the cover you can see that the content of these books is not so simple. It's not just a recreational texts, a light reading. Of course, historical novels did exist in the Soviet era, but it was difficult to find a historical novel at that time that was not only supposed to tell an interesting story. In the center of the historical novel there must be either revolutionaries, fiery revolutionaries as they used to be, to call, to be called, um, or some kinds of leaders of popular uprisings, Stenka Razin, Emelian Pugachev, Huverao, what Tylers. From our modern point of view, they could be considered robbers, but from the point of view of the historians and writers of the time, they were leaders of peasant uprisings, peasant wars. Uh, if a historical novel concerned a certain Tsar, then it must be Tsar who moved Russia along the path of, of progress, like Peter the Great. Alexei Tolstoy wrote a famous novel about uh, Peter the Great. Or the Tsar must perform some positive historic function, such as, for example, Ivan III as the unifier of Russia in the novel by Valery Yezvitsky. Science fiction also did exist, but in very strict limits. Science fiction was supposed to be really scientific. That is, it should be a bureau of inventions or discoveries, a patent bureau. Writers come up with machines and mechanisms, gadgets, gadgets as we would now say, and thus bring the future closer in their own way along with scientists. However, there was a science fiction in the Soviet Union which had a slightly, slightly different character. I mean the communist utopias, such as those written by, by Ivan Efremov in 1950s and social fiction, which in uh, presenting new worlds actually spoke of the modern problems of our world. Such were the famous writings by brothers Arkady and Boris Strugatsky. But in general there were very strong limitations in the field of science fiction, and even more strict limitations in the fields of mystery and adventure literature. Mystery novels of that era, for example, uh, those of the Weiner brothers, who themselves served in the police, were written on the basis of real cases. But all this had situations in which state power conquered chaos, uh, beating those who threatened not individuals, but the state. Adventure literature, on the other hand, has always been, to a certain extent, idealized. Ideologist. Here I can recollect spy novel of uh, Julian Semenov, who was very popular due to the film adaptations of his works. Among uh, these uh, screen adaptations was a famous, the most famous Soviet film, 17 Instances of Spring. Um, in the Soviet Union there was no James Bond. The novels about Bond as well as films were not welcomed and did not appear. But there was Russian own superhero, the Secret Service agent Maxim Isayev, a spy, who managed to penetrate the higher echelons of the Third Reich and extracted secrets from there uh, that were important for victory. Of course, as modern historians argue, this kind of literature did not have any historical basis. Uh, that is, it had a purely adventurous character, but always in, uh, imitated, imitated ideology. Such mystery and adventure literature was firstly very much restricted. It is not possible to name many famous names here in this field. Secondly, it represented a huge deficit. In order to obtain a book, people in the late Soviet Union sometimes had to give the state kilograms of scrap paper. Of scrap paper. You should hand over 20 kilograms of scrap paper to the state for recycling in return for a coupon, and with this coupon you could buy an interesting book, Alexander Dumas. So, where are the, how were the gaps filled? Uh, 
the gaps are indeed always filled. They don't remain empty. And in many respects, the situation of the lack of recreational literature with light written contributed to the rise of a serious non-genre, a light, elite literature, including classics. In a situation where there was nothing to read in the historical genre, the novel like War and Peace by Lev Tolstoy could be perceived as a historical and even uh, as an adventure novel. Tolstoy in his novel had a lot of purely romantic episodes when say Nikolai Rostov rescues uh, Princess Maria from the rebel peasants. In such episodes there were not too much difference with Walter, Walter Scott's novel. Anna Karenina could be read as a romance novel. It is no accident that it was so often adopted for screen up until today. Uh, and the novel Crime and Punishment can be regarded as mystery story as well as the Karamazov brothers by Dostoevsky. This is a secret, albeit not only one, behind what is called Russian literary centrism. That is the situation when literature became the main creative art and all the others, all other arts lined with it. The lack of function to entertain, the deficit of mass literature in the late Soviet era, of course it was a difficult situation for the reader. And at the same time it was very beneficial because there was a huge interest in reading while there was a shortage of literature. This whole situation, the lack of recreational literature, or its complete absence, and the mass circulations of classics, was ambiguous. On the one hand, there was nothing to read. But on the other hand, interest in literature prepared the peak, the literary boom, that aroused in Russian literature at the very outset of the Soviet power. In its last years, during Perestroika from 1986 to 1991, this was the golden age of Russian literature.